All right, guys, this video is a little different. This is gonna go into some of the things I don't like about Scrappy. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, happy holidays. Before we dive into this video, that's cool about the things I do and don't like about Scrappy, which actually means there's some upgrades coming on Scrappy. I am a few videos behind, but we will get caught up. But the good news is we're gonna do some upgrades, some mods, and we actually have had Scrappy out in the dirt, and so those videos will be coming soon. Super excited about that. Uh, I wanted to let all of you know, for the holidays, we did get a few things together in time. I'm really excited about it. Horizon Hobby did some really cool stuff. First of all, they got Draco RCs back in stock, so they're available and ready to ship. Check out uh, MikePady.com for the link of where to get Dracos that are now in stock. Also, they did something super cool. They made Draco Christmas ornaments. They're on my website, MikePady.com. They can hang from your tree. Super cool. This is a limited run. As far as I'm concerned, this is a one-time deal. So there are a few of these, and when they're out, they're out. So I think they're 20 bucks on the site. Also, it's pretty cool. Um, this is available. They got Draco in E-Flight uh, from Horizon. So I'm super excited about that. Uh, for the holidays. Um, thank you all of you who sent in different ideas for different shirts, scrappy shirts. We got a bunch of new ones, check them out. We do have a bunch in stock. So if you wanted to get some shirts, hats, gear, I would appreciate it. We take that money and we have a way to give it back to aviation, bring new pilots into aviation, give people or pay for people's first flight. What are you doing up there? I'm so uh, thank you for supporting that and supporting our aviation family. Also, I wanted to let all of you know that I wanted to find a way to give back to all of you for Christmas. So the way I'm gonna do that is, it came about because the wing spar kits took so long to ship. All the spar kits that had to do with the spars that we bent, twisted, broke, cut up, colored, and uh, made into a little packet of scrappy components have all shipped. So everybody, they are all on their way. There are none waiting on back order any longer. And because of all the requests, we just took what was left of the spars we had to finish out that, cut them up, and we made some extra. I am not gonna do a run of them. It was a one-time deal if I tried to produce a couple here and there, they would cost way more than we sell them for. So the little scrappy spar kits have shipped. They're $50 and I did make a few extra. So whoever gets there first, I hope you guys pick them up and, and grab those extras that we made and then we're done with those. Um, thank you guys for supporting me because I felt so bad about how long it took to get all those shipped. I wanna make sure that all those people that have ever bought anything from me and waited for something to show up, and matter of fact, if you bought anything and it showed up the next day, I wanted to find a way to send out some Christmas presents. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go through every, uh, through my entire list of all of you that have ever bought anything, whether it's shirts, hats, gear, Dracos, anything, and I'm gonna just start randomly selecting a bunch of you and sending you Christmas presents. So we're gonna send off a bunch of random things. That includes full-size RC Dracos, shirts, hats, gear, whatever. We have some surprises that we'll be coming to random people that have ever picked up anything from us online. So thank you guys. I appreciate all your support. It gives back to the aviation community. I, I love you all. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. I hope you're having a great time with your family. And if you're not with them in person, please call them up, let them know you love them. You guys know the drill. Let's spend some time with our family, and we'll get back to work.
So performance, a lot of you have asked, what is the true performance? What is its top speed? What's its ground roll? I have several questions. I don't have all the answers yet because I haven't pushed Scrappy's motor to its full horsepower limit. I still need to make a controller that backs off the timing so I can utilize the nitrous and push the 600 horsepower this is designed to. So for now, the airports I've been taking off anywhere around here, most of the time, the density altitude near 7,000 feet. So if we do some quick math, back out the density altitude off a normally aspirated engine, I've got this up to about 350 horsepower right now. If you put that horsepower to weight ratio of this aircraft, the way I'm gonna be flying it, I'm almost the exact same as a stock Cub, which means it should perform very similar to a stock Cub in its acceleration ability. Right now, when I'm missing several hundred horsepower more, we will add to it soon. Yep, 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 yep. I went out with some friends and we just did some comparisons because we wanted to know what is the ground roll. And if I throw out a number and I'm using a 7,000 feet density altitude and someone wants to compare it to sea level, they're gonna be drastically apart. But if I talk about how it compares from one aircraft to another, at the same day, same altitude, same runway, this will give you a better understanding of how it compares at all altitudes on a normally aspirated engine. So if you wanna know how Scrappy performs so far without the nitrous or my new plans, it's slightly better than a stock cup, but not quite as good as my wife single seat flying her carbon cup. So it kind of sits right in the middle, about right what you would expect for horsepower to weight. However, one of the things I love is Scrappy absolutely blew my mind. I was not expecting it to do as well as it did. I'm absolutely blown away by the manipulation of this wing and all of the flying characteristics of Scrappy. I, from the first flight to the last flight I've flown in Scrappy, I have not had any problems. No surprises, it flies great, it flies unbelievably slow for how heavy the aircraft is. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. So I am flying slower than any aircraft I have ever owned in one of the heavier Cub style aircrafts I have ever built. Quite frankly, when I designed and did all the flow analysis on the wing, I actually didn't want to tell people how well the computer said it would do because I didn't believe it myself. And the wing did everything the flow analysis said it would do, which quite frankly, blows my mind. And not only does it fly as slow as the computer said it would and create as much lift as it said it would, but one of the areas that was really tough to figure out how to calculate how much pitching moment my giant flaps would create combined with the fact that my ailerons droop 50 per, nearly 50% of the flap droop making it a huge pitching moment and whether or not the front of that wing growing forward 14 and a half inches of total cord growth and how that pitching moment that lifts the back of the plane when you deploy big flaps and ailerons, how much could the two leading edge devices as they move and out counteract that pitch to optimize the wing without losing efficiency of having to ask stick your control into your gut to get the elevator up to counteract the pitch. When I deploy the flaps and ailerons, my double leading edge device moves with it, changes the entire camber arc radius, cord length, and lifting moment of the wing all happen together. And I am getting no trim changes required at all. All that happens is as I, on my hand, move one switch, never taking my hand off the throttle and reaching for anything. As I deploy it, my stick pressure on my right hand virtually doesn't change. It barely changes where I need slightly aft pressure, but I'd not even enough that you notice it unless you think about it. Meaning I am not running trim 
to try and help that super big pitching moment, which means the wing is transforming correctly. And I'm not having to manipulate flap, aileron, first leading device, second leading device, and somewhere in between doing it wrong and, and then having huge trim changes. Now, a downside came with that. I didn't expect it to fly so much slower, even though it weighs so much. In the design, I put on a cub aileron, a large cub aileron from a carbon cub, and it works perfect. It's balance, it's control, it's input, it's pressures are absolutely spot on. When I'm upwards of 38 to 42 miles an hour where that aileron is designed for. But Scrappy is flying in the low 30s. And as I'm approaching the low 30s, I found something I don't quite like about Scrappy. At 40 miles an hour, I'm using very little aileron control, but there's this dynamic curve that starts to fall off when you start going sub 40. At sub 40, that wind across your control surfaces really fades off and it takes massive movement to make roll control changes. And Scrappy is doing that. So I'm flying Scrappy around and taking off a little faster and landing a little faster, unless there's absolutely no wind, then I go ahead and slow it down into the low 30s and it crawls in. It's, it's absolutely unbelievable how well the wing works. But my aileron, if the wind picks up, I'm starting to use more than I'm comfortable with. Now, I've never got to the point where I hit a stop or ran out, but because of past experiences. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. I'm a little extra leery of roll control and crosswinds and high winds. And I think that's an area that a lot of Cub type aircraft have had. Problems, I certainly had my problems and bad winds, but that was extra bad winds and a really dumb decision on my part. But I would like to have more roll control on Scrappy. And so I'm gonna make larger ailerons. Now there are some problems, I'm gonna work into that, but ailerons, I can't just make it bigger because right now my input control pressures are perfect. It feels so good, light-handed, quick and nimble. If I go just larger aileron and cord, it's gonna get heavy handed. It's gonna feel like I wanna put two hands to control it. So I'm gonna design a new aileron. We're gonna to have to, we're actually gonna grow it in cord. I'm gonna grow it in length. I've got about nine more inches on the end and I'm gonna put a horn going out the front. It's something to give it power steering. So I'm gonna calculate what I need to do to enlarge the cord of my aileron three and a half inches, enlarge the length, the nine inches that I still have spare one more bay in the length of the current wing in length of the aileron, and I'm gonna put a horn on the front of it that I can add the weight for counterbalance, and as that goes up into the wind, it helps with the pressures of the aileron. So that's an area I need to do. My aileron will now be three and a half inches longer than my flap, so I'm gonna make a larger flap. Now that's an area I don't need. The plane is flying so stinking slow, but if I'm gonna enlarge my aileron, I want the flap to be trued up with it, so I'm gonna enlarge that at the same time. So let's talk about another area I'm not really happy with the aircraft. I love this prop for static thrust. It is unbelievable, which is why I wanted to do some tests with it. It was pulling over 1,400 pounds of static thrust on the ramp. here at this high elevation, which is mind blowing. Cruising at half throttle, 125 miles an hour. I'm pegged on RPM because it is a fixed pitch ground adjustable prop. Um, it doesn't let me see how fast the aircraft is. So that comes back to the point a lot of people are asking, how fast is Scrappy? We don't know. I haven't gone to the point where I twist the blade enough to see what its top speed is at full throttle because that would make the ground roll so long having trying to bite that much air, I'd be trying to launch the aircraft with like 1500 RPM, which would be almost half power normally aspirated. So I wanna make a new prop. I've been designing with a friend of mine, a full constant speed hub for these blades. Just going ahead and making our own hub. If I make my own hub, I wanna make it a variable pitch in air, automatic, just like any constant speed propeller, However, I also want it to be constant speed, oil driven with reverse. So that's not available other than on turbines 
or an electric drive. So I've been designing a constant speed reversible prop with those blades. That would be pretty awesome. Not saying I'm doing it, but I'm definitely engineering it and going down that path. Um, the next area, of course, is the ground roll. I'm happy that it performs right in line with cubs at a similar altitude, any cub. Some I do better, some I don't quite do as well. Um, but the thought of having to only be a similar horsepower when I was used to Draco, which was silly, crazy horsepower. <laughs> Draco, I didn't care if I had four people and 400 pounds of bags and six hours of fuel on it. It felt like it just took off in seconds. This plane feels like any other plane. If you put a lot of weight in it, it starts to drag it down. I need more power. So I thought I could be happy with nitrous and just rarely, occasionally throw in nitrous if I needed it. Nah, I'm gonna twin turbo it. I told you, I told you, I know. I told you, I told you, I know. I, I need, I wanna have that power all the time. I wanna have 600 horsepower if I want it at any altitude and not worry about how full is the nitrous. Is my automatic timing retard working? So those are some of the areas that uh, I'm not happy with. I want more power all the time, even though I haven't found out what this will do at full power. I'm gonna go a different method, so I always have it. But overall, there has been no surprises. None. <laughs> I've been flying this thing squawk free and loving every second of it. Um, my biggest single regret overall. My single biggest regret, I haven't been able to fly. I have been coast to coast all over this country and playing catch up and I'm still not there. I've only flown Scrappy a few times, but every time I've flown it, I grin from ear to ear. I couldn't be happier about the designs and everything that turned out. So I can't wait to perfect it, tweak it, let's make it better. The only way to do that, that's to work. All right guys, it's time to give away another Draco. This great big one in the box right here is gonna go to somebody and I know I was giving away a bunch of Dracos and we've done a bunch already and I've got more to give away and we're gonna keep doing it. But I was feeling bad as we looked at how many people entered to win a free Draco and wrote lots of ideas on things to grow aviation, the things they're doing to grow aviation. It made me so happy. So what I did is we, we whittled down a whole bunch and just randomly selected a bunch. We put it in this hat and now I'm gonna randomly, randomly pick them out of a hat for you. The ones I read, at least you can win uh, t-shirts, some stickers, some just Mike Patey gear at MikePatey.com. And then one, the last person I draw out of here is going to win a Draco RC. Uh, out of Iowa, Matt Overman. Now there could be multiple people with the same name in the same state that also watch my videos. I don't know about that, but it may happen. You're gonna get an email. So Matt is uh, flying RCs and teaching neighborhood kids about aviation through his RCs. So, that is awesome. You are gonna get Draco gear. We'll send you an email on how to make that happen. Nate Hess out of Oregon, uh, runs a small business, loves the Wilga. Awesome, I love the Wilga too, and I love the Draco. All right, we got New Jersey, Sasha Portnoy, loves flying RCs and inspiring kids to fly and aviation video games. Awesome. Out of Michigan, Kyle Depois. I hope I said that right. Marine Corps, Veteran in Iraq, flies RC, and teaches others to fly and about aviation. We support our troops. Thank you, Kyle, that's awesome. So Kyle, you're gonna get some gear. Um, get on MikePage.com, we have uh, I Support Our Troops Mike Page shirts. That should turn out so cool. I wish I was wearing one, I could show it to you, but they're awesome, so thank you. All right, drum roll. We got more to go, so if you don't win this Draco, you got more chances. All right, out of Florida, Jamie Top joined a flying club and evolved on airport board at KSGJ. You're the winner of that Draco. So congratulations, that's awesome. There's probably not very many in Florida named Jamie Top. 
that also is on the board at KSGJ. Thank you for watching the videos, following along. The rest of you are gonna get gear. This box goes to Jamie. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do? Get back to work. A lot of you have asked for me to come up with more shirts, so here's one of them. But some of you have done such a great job and went out and created designs for me. I've put a couple of those up on the website and sent some of those people some money um, to say thanks for doing that for me. And there's some more we're still looking at, so we're gonna keep coming up with more Draco, scrappy, back to work, gear, hats, outfits, shirts, mugs, whatever. So I wanted to thank you all for supporting and I want to give that back. So I am gonna launch a program to get more new pilots in the air, first flight programs. You guys stay tuned, uh, I'll have more on this later. It's not ready, so for the website. For you flight schools, I wanna find a way to get connected with you and that will be coming soon so that I can find those people that are most deserving or would like that opportunity to have a first flight and let me pay for it. So I am gonna find more ways to give back all of the your love you're sharing with me and my passion and our entire aviation family. So thank you for buying this silly gear of mine. Even just recently, I was back east and ran into somebody wearing a shirt of mine and it just blew me away. I was so excited to go up and shake this person's hand and tell him how much I appreciate him following along and watching the videos and getting a chance to talk to someone in aviation that loves aircraft like I love aircraft. To all of you, thank you. I love you guys, I love aviation. We have the greatest family. You know the drill. Let's get back to work.